Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your boy Drew here back again with another video for all you CONCACAF soccer fans out there. And in this video, we're going to talk about, obviously, as the title, you can see the title, the Gold Cup, and more, more specifically, going to get into bigger teams that I think have a chance at winning the whole Gold Cup trophy. I'm going to talk about USA, Mexico, the two quote-unquote favorites, and then I'm going to talk about some other maybe dark horses that I think might have a chance to win the trophy. So... Without further ado, let's get to it. But of course, before we get started, if you guys love soccer and you want to see get the growth and respect it deserves, not just in America, but in the whole CONCAP region, subscribe down below, hit the like button, and be part of the change. So the Gold Cup starts tomorrow, but if you guys are watching this video tomorrow, then it starts today. And if you guys are watching this video on Sunday, then the Gold Cup started yesterday, and we got some more games to watch today. <laughs> but whenever you guys are watching this, I'm sure all us CONCAP fans are all very excited for this CONCACAF Gold Cup to finally start. Finally see our nation represented in this tournament, really have a good time, see all, all maybe some big upsets, some major major upsets I'm sure will happen in this Gold Cup. And like I said in the intro, what I really want to do in this video is mostly talk about the nations that I think have a chance at winning this whole thing, uh, especially maybe more of the dark horses that people kind of want to, um, people maybe glance over when they're talking about Gold Cup favorites. So. Obviously, we got to start off with this YouTube channel's homeland, which is the USA. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on the USA, so all my American soccer fans out there, you know, be patient. Don't worry. Your boy Drew is still supporting and repping the USA. But we got to give some other love and other, other predictions to the other CONCACAF teams in this uh, tournament. And, you know, this channel, mo this channel mostly always talks about USA anyway, so we'll, we'll be fine. The USA... Wow, we really should have shaved earlier today. But, all right, whatever. The USA obviously has had some troubles in its path leading to this Gold Cup tournament. You know, losing the, the only two friendly games we had before this. Two friendly games that you would think the USA hand-picked because they knew they would have a possibility or may, a big, big possibility of winning those two games against Jamaica and Venezuela. <laughs> well, guess what? We did not. We played terrible in both games. We got humiliated in both games by teams who were very good, very strong, and very, very impressive um, and very a team that both teams that we really really um, underrated, and I hope that we don't keep doing that going into this Gold Cup because we're going to start off playing against Guyana in the group stage match. Now, what I really hope for, or what I really think the USA needs to do in order to actually win this Gold Cup, is improve the midfield quality. And I say in every single video that I talked about leading up to this Gold Cup or leading up to any single. Uh, U.S. men's soccer team uh, match or friendly, whatever. I talk about that we need a midfield that's strong, a midfield that can create, can defend, can cut passing lanes, can really develop good key plays to feed our wingers, feed the striker, and support the defense. I mean, yeah, support the defense all in one. We need players who can do all of that. Um, and right now, with Will Trap leading that mid that midfield and Tyler Adams out of this Gold Cup tournament. Our chances of winning this whole Gold Cup are very, very unlikely. Um, but I'm still saying positive as much as I can. But you know, us American soccer fans really find it hard to stay positive with this national team because of the of the direction it always seems to go in. We seem to really get hyped up for a certain player or a certain you know a certain coach or whatever. Then out of nowhere, or just like always, we start to tumble down. One thing goes wrong and leads to another thing, and we just really gold spiral downwards now the roster we all talked about in previous videos i've seen all your guys comments a lot of you guys really not impressed with this roster um besides players like weston mckinney Kristen pulisic you know zach Steffen, all those players seem to get a lot of love in the comment section and rightfully so because those are players who really are our key players going into this tournament but, other, but if you look at other players other than that we don't have any other major standout stars, other major solid, you know, magnific magnificent players, especially in the attacking line. We got Zardes, Jordan Morris, and my favorite, Josie Altidore. Um, But I'm hoping that those three players can actually get on the score sheet, get some good support from our wingers, you know, uh, Christian Pulisic and a newcomer, Tyler Boyd. I'm waiting to see how they will play together with feeding feeding balls into whoever it is, maybe Zardes or Altador leading the line of attack. But I, 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 have, I have no hope. So if you look at USA's Gold Cup group stage, you can see the other teams were paired up with Guyana, Panama, and Trinidad and Tobago. And if you look at it in in a 
on paper sort of view, you would think that the USA would win three wins out of three, yada, 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 piece of cake, piece of pot, piece of pot, piece of cake, no problem, or three wins, whatever. And, and, that, that, and that's definitely what it looks like on paper. But if you look deeper into these teams, obviously I would hope that USA would, would be able to beat Guyana in the opening match, which I most likely think we'll be able to, but probably just by a 1-0 margin, especially if the team is really not yet formed on how Greg Brother likes it to be formed, or, you know, if Will Trap plays in midfield again and gives the ball out to Guyana players for them to score. Uh, but whatever. I, I really see and predict... USA winning one nail against Guyana in the opening match. And then going into the next matches, you see Panama and Trinidad and Tobago. Obviously, the game against Trinidad and Tobago, a really, really crucial and really important match. A lot of American soccer fans are really going to be watching because Trinidad was a nation that knocked us out or ruined our chances of getting into the to the World Cup of 2018. But you know, when you when you think the more you think about that elimination from the World Cup, you think more of you know what we kind of eliminated ourselves before that Trinidad game because we really were slacking way before that. We, we, we lost games and tied games we should have won back before we, we got to play Trinidad and Tobago on the last final qualification day. So whatever. But teams like Panama and Trinidad, I really think, have the capability to really at least grind out a draw or really grind out a win against this unstable, unbalanced U.S. men's national team. So we're just going to have to wait and see how Greg Peralta lines is up, how Greg Peralta wants to line up this team or set up this formation, how he wants to set up his whole formation around Will Trap and Yazzie Zardas. We're just, we're just going to have to wait and see. Because um, if, if there's some a, a, a sliver of good quality play or good quality style buildup in the first game against Guyana, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt because, you know, Guyana really is not, with all due respect, the strongest team in this group stage. So... We really can't get all hyped up if we win like 3-0 against Guyana. We really can't get hyped up because we know what happens when American soccer fans get hyped up. We get hurt in the end. Moving on to another favorite to win this Gold Cup, that being Mexico. Now, obviously, Mexico are a really, really great team. Have They have a really good chunk of great prospect, great, ta great talented players in their roster. Um, and I'll get to them in a second. But I really want to talk about some really some players who really didn't get to make this uh, Gold Cup roster due to some injury or other factors in their life. Like Chicharito was not in his Gold Cup roster because he had a child born and he wants to spend time with his kid, his newborn baby. Okay, that's cool. You know, all props to him. We also got players like Carlos Vela who denied the chance to be called up because, you know, Carlos Vela kind of has some beef and drama going on right now with the Mexican national team. So he hasn't been called up or played for the Mexican national team in a long time. We got players like Miguel Ayun and, uh, what is it, Ander Herrera, who really, not Ander Herrera, he's Spaniard. What's that? Hector Herrera um, from Porto, who really both not called up um, due to some slight injury or some exhaustion from playing in the league. That's what it said in, in, the, in the paper. Don't quote your boy Drew. I'm just quoting the paper. We also got a big, big star for Mexico out of the Gold Cup squad. That being, of course... Irvin Chucky Lozano. Now, Lozano is a player who I was really excited to see play in this Gold Cup. I was really excited to see possibly a Mexico-USA final. We'd get to see Christian Pulisic and Chucky Lozano going at it. The two two players, young prospects from rivalry nations who are both dubbed one some of the best up-and-coming players of their nationality. So, I was really excited to see those two be pitted up against each other like they always have been so far this past season. Now, I think, but even with, sorry, wow, a lot of stuttering. <laughs> anyway, now, even with those omissions from the from Mexico's roster, Mexico still has a really, really dangerous team, especially in the attacking line, especially, especially, especially when you look at their main striker, the guy who they're really going to be hoping to get some lots and lots of goals this year in this Gold Cup. Why am I so orange right now? That being... Raul Jimenez from Wolverhampton Wanderers in the English Premier League. Now, Jimenez had a really, really great season with um, Wolverhampton Wanderers in the EPL, scoring 13 goals, giving 7 assists in 38 games for the league. So he really was on fire uh, in this his last campaign in the EPL. Really, really a good quality striker, really, really good player. Really rejuvenated his career since joining Wolves. But other than him, we got players like Jonathan Dos Santos from LA Galaxy, who has been having a good season so far with LA, so he's going to obviously be hoping to keep the momentum, keeping that form going for him 
into this tournament for the Mexican national team. Also got their, you know, their world, their world famous goalkeeper Guillermo Ochoa, who had like so many memes for the 2014 World Cup. You know, making so many saves. For the Mexico in World Cups, you know, being their number one keeper for a long, long time. And he seems to be like a really, really good tournament goalkeeper, always knowing when to turn on his good super form in goal. So that's going to be a really a pain for us. You know, they got good defenders like Diego Reyes, Carlos Salcedo, Hector Moreno. Like, they just, they're, they're stacked, bro. Andres Cordado, midfielder. <sighs> Eric Gutierrez, PS, another PSV prospect, young uh center midfield from Mexico. You guys know what I'm saying. They're stacked. But you know what the biggest threat for Mexico right now is? Just just, just try to guess. It's Tata Martino, okay? It's their manager, Tata Martino. Obviously, one of, you know, a, a manager who really took LA United to great heights in their first season in the MLS. A manager that LA United really wish was still with them because he brought them so much glory and he's such a good, like, he's he really rejuvenated his career ever since being sacked by Bar as as Barcelona coach a couple years ago. He kind of you know picked himself picked himself up the ground, coached Argentina for a little bit. Kind of didn't have the best run there, you know. Went to went to MLS, got with Atlanta, Atlanta United, really helped them, won stuff with them, and then got moved up to the Mexican national team. Now, obviously, like I've said, I like for, like you guys know, he didn't become the USA coach like we all wanted him to because of a language barrier. But obviously, he only mostly speaks Spanish, so why not be coach of the Mexican national team where they speak Spanish as well? And this could have been the worst thing that could have happened to us because now Mexico has a really good good squad, good key players, good prospects in their squad, but they really need a good manager to get them all together, get them in line, get them set up right so they can actually really activate their really, really great potential of a national team that they are. And now with Tata Martino leading the helm, or at the helm of this national team, they just look like a really big, big threat. As you can see, they had they won their last two friendly games before this World Cup, before this Gold Cup, in flying colors. So that's gonna be. This video's actually turned out to be very, very long. At least what I can see in my camera. So I'm gonna keep keep moving forward. So if I talk fast. I'm so sorry. I just don't want it to be like a 30 minute video because nobody likes 30 minute videos. And it takes like three hours just to upload to YouTube. So anyway, let's talk about a dark two dark horses real quick. First one, Canada. Canada obviously is a dark horse. You know, Canada's a team that really didn't have much luck in previous seasons um, in, in national team tournaments. But I feel like they're a nation, again, under the radar that's really been developing young players, develop, developing their national team, their roster, their squad. Under, Like I said, under the radar. No one really paying attention to it because it's not USA or Mexico. So why would they pay attention to it? But they got good players in this team. You know, they got a good keep, good, good goalkeeper in Milan Borjan, who plays for Real Star Belgrade. They got players like Jonathan Osario from Toronto FC. Right now, he's got three goals, three assists in 12 games for Toronto in MLS. So he's really on fire right now. Another player hoping to bring that MLS momentum with him to this Gold Cup tournament. They got a youngster prospect as well. Just like we have Pulisic, Mexico has Lozano. They got Alfonso Davis from Bayern Munich. Obviously, the 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 previous, previous, well, what do you say? He used to play for he used to play for Vancouver Whitecaps. Now he plays for Bayern Munich. Okay, he's previously a Vancouver Whitecaps player. Now he plays for Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. You know, I don't think he's really featured for the team. Maybe just once, like as a, as a senior uh, a senior appearance. But for the most part, they seem to be really happy with having Alfonso Davis there in their you know in their youth squad or in their senior team. Whatever, he seems to be a really really great prospect, and I think. This tournament will be the tournament where he's going to be able to shine and show the world and his and maybe and his home club that you know what I can play I can hang with big boys so let me get in fill Frank Ribery's spot or Iron Robin's spot and before we wrap up Canada's prediction from your boy Drew I want to talk about another player who I think will be a major threat to other nations in this tournament and a major major boost for Canada in the attacking line and that is Lucas Cavallini from Pueblo FC. Well, he's from Canada, but he plays his soccer in Pueblo FC in Liga MX. Right now has five goals and one assist in 16 games with the Clausura and six goals, two assists in 17 games in Apertura. So he, altogether, he's, he's had 11 goals and three assists. So he's really on fire as well. A good striker that really seems to be going under the radar. When I saw his stats and I was like, dude, 
why don't people talk about him much? Like, is, I know he doesn't play for like one of the biggest Mexican Liga Mex teams, but still, like, I feel like he would get some more recognition. But maybe this will be the tournament where he'll be able to really make a name for himself, a name that people will actually be able to recognize around CONCACAF and maybe around the world. I really dub him to bleed, not dub him. I really think he will be able to score lots of goals in this gold in this gold cup. So uh, you guys can hold me to that because I really think he's got it in him. And now, if you look at the group stage for Canada, you can see they're actually lined up with Cuba, Martinique, and Mexico. So obviously, you would think that Mexico and Canada would both be able to get out of this group stage. I predict your boy Drew predicts Mexico will probably finish up top. Canada second, and then Cuba and Martinique. So I think Mexico will obviously top the group, but I don't think they'll be able to really get an easy win over Canada. If, when, they, when these teams finally meet up in this in this group stage, I think it's going to be a really, really even match. It might end goalless. It might end 2-2, 1-1. I, I really wouldn't put it past these teams to end in a draw, and I think that would work out in Canada's favor. And the final group I want to talk about, obviously, that being the team who defeated us on the way to the Gold Cup. Jamaica. You know, I think a lot of people aren't hyping Jamaica up as much as I am because I think Jamaica really has a good, solid team. The fact that they were able to beat the USA with their quote-unquote B or C team doesn't matter. Jamaica also didn't have their A squad playing against our A squad. So I think that Jamaica still has a lot more to show the world and show this CONCACAF tournament that, you know what, we're just not some the, the same old team that, you know, you guys used to push around. Their team that was really is developing. They got players like Leon Bailey coming up in the ranks. Obviously, already an established player in the Bundesliga, one of the best players in that league for Bayer Leverkusen. So I really think he's going to come in here, and this will be a, a chance for another player to really show his colors and really shine bright for his national team, just like hopefully Pulisic, just like Alfonso Davis, and just like Leon Bailey. I really think Jamaica has a strong chance of b causing some major upsets with... USA, Mexico, and Canada. You know, obviously, the, the, Jamaica is not in the group stage with either either of those two teams. So, they'll be able to probably, you know, get through their group stage qualifications pretty easily, I would say, and then probably cause some upsets in the way. If they're, if they're formed right, they're set up correctly, and they really give, them, give it their all, don't give up, they'll be able to reach their third consecutive Gold Cup final and possibly win it this time. And, and you know, and if it's going to be a Cinderella story, I would say, you know what, it would fit perfectly with Jamaica. You know, losing the last two Gold Cup finals to Mexico and USA, now coming back, beating both of them along the way, probably meeting Canada or something would be, would be really cool, and then defeating whoever it is in the Gold Cup final, and finally getting that Gold Cup title for them. Well, that's my Gold Cup preview on teams I think have a good chance at winning this tournament. Obviously, we've got teams like Costa Rica, who I failed to mention in this video, but I really haven't been impressed by Costa Rica all that much in recent times. So that's why I gave that that last dark horse spot to Jamaica over them. But anyway, regardless, I want to wish good luck to all these CONCACAF nations out there. Good luck on the field. Good luck in this tournament. I hope you guys all give it your best. You know, I think if we all give it our best, really show some really good quality soccer, that the rest of the world would be able to respect CONCACAF as a stronger better competitive uh, region of the world of soccer. You know, we could be the best nation, I mean, could be the best region in the world if we really, all of us really just supported our teams and, and, and just gave it our best. And I really hope we all do that this tournament. I really hope this is the year that turns fans into the focus of soccer in CONCACAF especially. So uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm gonna be covering the Gold Cup as it goes. Big, any big upset I'll be covering on this channel. Any Obviously, any USA game I'll be covering as well. And if you guys want some Canada or Mexican uh, national team coverage on this channel, let me know down below, and your boy Drew will definitely put it out there for y'all. So as always, have fun playing or have fun watching. Thanks for kicking with me, and I'll see you next time.